When you think of a crime that carries 10 years in prison, what comes to mind? Something violent, no doubt. Assault? Kidnapping? Attempted murder? What about giving water to someone who's thirsty? What happens when compassion becomes a crime? Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Anita Kreintz is the co-founder of Toronto Pig Save, an activist organization that bears witness to animals on their way to slaughter. I've personally attended one of their all-day vigils, and you can see my account of their incredibly important work in this video, which is also linked below, along with my first interview with Anita on the founding of Toronto Pig Save. Anita is now facing jail time for giving water to thirsty pigs, an act of compassion the Pig Save activists carry out at every vigil, especially those in the dead heat of summer. On June 22nd, this past summer, we had our weekly vigils at Fearman's Pork Incorporated, and the trucks, before they enter the slaughterhouse, they stop at a set of lights. And what we do is we go up to the trucks and peer in, and uh, what we witnessed was a really sad and heartbreaking sight. The pigs were heavily panting, foaming at the mouth, and uh, clearly suffering from the heat and uh, from thirst. And so I said, let's give them some water. And I started giving water and then the driver jumped out of the cab and uh, shouted, uh, don't give them water. If you give them thirsty, if you are, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, give them water. No, if you're homeless, you know what? These are not, these are not humans, you dumb frickin' broad. The confrontation continued with Anita asking the driver to show some compassion and the driver calling the police and threatening to knock the bottle of water out of her hand. I have a link to the video of the entire incident in the description below. And that was the end of it, but about two months afterwards, uh, a Toronto officer came to my home and issued me a summons, uh, charging me with criminal mischief. And I was really surprised. I go, what does it relate to? And he told me the date and I said, oh, well, I, I know that day because I did a video. Come in and let me show you the video. And so I showed him the video and he, you know, he, he, he said, you know, I'm supposed to be neutral. I can't really say anything, but this is probably going to be in the news. Anita Krein stopped to give water to pigs that were inside the back of a truck. And Anita Krein joins us now in our downtown Toronto studio. It involves an animal rights activist and what she did while a truckload of pigs were being transported to a processing plant. And if you're there, it's impossible not to try to help them. If you were standing on that traffic island with me and you saw them frothing at the mouth and literally dying of heat and de dehydration, you would be giving water. Formally charged with criminal mischief, defined as interference with the use, enjoyment, and operation of property, Anita originally faced 10 years in jail and a $5,000 fine. After a pre-trial court hearing on December 15th, it was reduced to six months and a fine. After that hearing, Anita released a statement, which she read to me when we spoke. I look forward to defending myself against these ridiculous charges. Compassion is not a crime. What I did was absolutely the right thing to do. Giving water to a thirsty animal is something any caring and reasonable person would do without a moment's notice. Giving water to the thirsty is a duty we all share and is recognized universally as such in all religions and philosophies as a form of the golden rule. It was obvious the pigs were suffering from heat and thirst in the transport truck headed to Fearman's Pork Incorporated Slaughterhouse this summer. When I or other members of Toronto Pig Save see suffering animals at our weekly vigils, we show them compassion the best we can. We will continue to bear witness and give water to thirsty pigs. I am grateful to the outpouring of support, love and solidarity I've received over this outrageous charge and from the wise and thoughtful guidance from my counsel, Gary Grill and James Silver, both of vegan lawyers. On the positive side, the media attention generated has allowed for the average person to think of the equivalence of poor suffering pigs trapped in transport trucks in the extreme heat as no different than the horror of dogs stuck in vehicles on hot days. I'm charged with interfering with property, the property being the pigs. Giving water to thirsty pigs is not interfering with property. Pigs are not property. They are individual sentient beings with feelings and they want to live and protect their well-being just like anybody else. Anita's case has garnered worldwide attention with an overwhelming reception on social media and not just from vegan animal activists. And what was interesting is my vegan Facebook friends said that their non-vegan friends were posting the petition and the videos. So it was really getting out there in a great way. It's, it's, it's an issue that has reached the hearts you know, the conscience of, 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 of all, all people, which is, which is wonderful. So it's sort of 
crossed over this divide that we traditionally have between vegans and non-vegans. And you know what I like about it is they're thinking about pigs, you know, a farmed animal. They get they understand that if if someone is thirsty, that the right thing to do is to give them water. And it, it's a universal principle that's recognized in all religions. It's a universal principle and it's written on our hearts and it's written in our conscience. So it's something that is common to all and it's it's what love is. It's just the definition of love and compassion. I ask Anita to comment on the concerns and arguments from the other side, such as the interference with the food supply. She broke down their arguments and offered compelling rebuttals, shocking revelations, and a powerful view of the ultimate outcome. For more information and hard proof of everything Anita mentions, please see the blog post for this video linked in the description below. Right, so one of the arguments that they're coming up with are, um, don't touch my stuff, you know, the pigs being property in, the, in their eyes, factory farmers, and also, how do we know what's in the water? If that's the best they can come with, up with, that that's their most compelling argument, it, there, there isn't much there. You know, people give sandwiches to homeless people and you don't assume that they're poison. It's quite, the, it's, it's a compassionate thing to do. We don't want to live in a world where no one is giving water to thirsty, the thirsty and food to the hungry. You know, if anyone is tampering with the food supply, it's the factory farmers. Okay, one, they are, in, they are the ones that are tampering with the food chain. They're introducing superbugs, MRSA superbugs. Two, the World Health Organization listed bacon, pork and ham as a group one carcinogen, along with asbestos, diesel fuel and tobacco. Three, the factory farmer who's charging me, Van Boykel, actually poisoned the water with the manure and was criminally charged and was going to be sentenced to 30 days in jail and several hundred thousand and then he appealed but he did plead guilty to the Ontario Water Resources Act violating that act and then he was uh, his fine was a few hundred thousand and then four we're giving water to pigs that are literally dying of 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 heat and thirst and we have reports uh, freedom of information reports that show dead on arrivals and, 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 and then fifth, this issue of property is going to be one of the main outcomes. Like animals are not property anymore. Like we're like the public views are changing with respect to pets. Like most people see them as family members. And now this case is an opening to challenge that notion for farmed animals. I mean, that's that's the story. You know, we got to get out there. You know, the sixth point, the most maybe the most beautiful point of all, like it's just like we know what's right. Let's listen to what's written in our conscience and on our hearts. And that is the golden rule and, you know, living a life of service and ministering. Maybe that's the ultimate, you know, along with property, animals are not property, but that is the biggest number six. That's the biggest conclusion is that this is this is universal ethics that's written in our hearts and conscience. And we know what's right. And in the end of the day, it's going to prevail. It prevailed for slaves, it prevailed for women, and it's going to prevail for animals. So, I mean, that's the ultimate that's the biggest, and that's how it ends, you know, like, boom. Anita's passion is palpable, and it's changing hearts and minds on a global scale. Activists in Argentina and Portugal demonstrated in her name outside of their Canadian embassies. The cry, compassion is not a crime, has resonated worldwide. To see the actions of Toronto Pig Save from the pig's perspective, see this video linked here and below as well. With a Freedom of Information Act obtained dead hog loss report showing 83 pigs dead on arrival over a nine-day period, factory farms introducing superbugs like MRSA into the food chain, the WHO finding processed meats like pig products to be carcinogenic, and the farmer accusing Anita having himself pled guilty to polluting the water supply, it's no wonder people are waking up. The criminalization of activism is unfortunately not new. In the United States, the Animal Enterprise Terrorism Act allows virtually any form of animal activism to be prosecuted as an act of terrorism. For more information on this absurdity, see the video linked here and below in the description. There are many ways you can support Anita and the SAVE movement. Consider donating to Toronto Pig SAVE, starting your own SAVE group. There's a link below with guidance on how. Purchasing a Compassion is not a crime shirt. Signing the petition linked below and sharing this video and Anita's story everywhere you can. It's time for a change. It's time to expose the real crimes and the real criminals. As Anita said, what's right will prevail. And that's how it ends. Please share this video far and wide to get Anita's message out. And do give it a thumbs up if you were moved by her story. If you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I put out fresh content covering all aspects of veganism every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. 
To help support Bite Size Vegan's educational efforts, please see the support links below or click the Nugget Army icon or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan, show compassion, and I'll see you soon. We love you so much and we're trying our best.